you start to realize that what you have to do is just empty your mind of everything. Like the Buddhists are talking about when they say, go into the void, empty your mind of everything you think you think, the contents of consciousness. And ultimately, what raises you up into the sphere, we could say, of, of divine love is, is this detachment from the personality self and the world that surrounds the personality self, not just the personality self, but the whole construct. Uh, like in the, the movie Truman Show, you know, it's all a set. You know, all of the characters in his life are actors. Uh, the, the environment is, is constructed, they say, along with the Great Wall of China, the only man-made thing that's visible from space, you know, is this giant, like, theater. But it's a nice symbol to help us realize that this whole cosmos is part of a cosmic theater that the ego made up and projected out. And it's only by identifying with this body and this personality self and the environment that surrounds the body, the personality self, that's where the struggles come in. That's where the fear comes. That's where the guilt, the shame, the worries, the concerns, all come from this identification with the construct of the world. And the peace comes when we learn to sink within through the stillness and through the process of letting go and releasing, to come into that stillness within our mind that is the spirit. You know, that is as God created us, to be pure spirit. So, you know, all these great movies that have come about, you know, remind us of that. Uh, we have uh, The Matrix, for example, where you have Neo, who's kind of like a, kind of disillusioned with the world, but he's like a hacker, you know. <laughs> he hacks into things and, and makes a little money on the side and senses that there's something more and he meets this guy, he wants to meet this, this man Morpheus, you know, a teacher, because he feels like that everything that he sees as his everyday life is, is part of something that's not really all that there is, that there's something much more than that. And that's what draws him to meet Morpheus and draws him to discover the nature of the Matrix. And Morpheus tells him the, the Matrix is all around you. You know, it's the, it's the prison that was made for your mind. And this prison is a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch or even feel or see. It's a, it's a prison for your mind. When we think about prisons in this world, we think of, you know, of of cells, we think of, of bars, we think of confinement of the body. And that's just the ego's version of a prison. Uh, the ego doesn't want you to know that it has constructed a prison for the mind. And the belief in the ego is the prison. So as long as you believe in the ego, your mind is in prison. Your mind is asleep, unaware of its true nature, its true reality in God. And then the world is made up as a construct, very much like the Matrix, you know, all of the, the people, it's just that the, the, even in the Matrix movie, the, the bodies are used as fuel uh, to run this world of machines and this vast projection uh, and everybody is kind of imprisoned in these uh, things that look to me kind of like toilets, <laughs> they're stuck in these toilets with all these tubes stuck into the, the back of their neck and their arms and legs and their spine and everything, you know, using this, this energy to, to run this uh, false world, this whole false construct that basically is, is run by the machines, you know. And so, um, you know, even the, the, the song at the end of the first Matrix movie is Rage Against the Machine, you know. It's almost like trying to pull away from this mechanical uh, world where everything seems to be so uh, ritualistic, so controlled, uh, and come to find true freedom. 
And what we're learning now through spirituality is we have to let go of the persona, we have to let go of the mask of this world to, to reach that divinity. And so for years, like back in the 1990s, I would work with a small group of so-called students where every day we would go deeper into the mind at learning how to release the construct of personhood. You know, instead of trying to be a free person, uh, you know, <laughs> give that up. Uh, I, I heard for years, David, you live in the United States of America. You live in a free country. Oh, a free <coughs> country. That's another interesting. Unlike communism <coughs> or socialism, you live in free country. Capitalism, there you go, that's freedom. You know, free enterprise system. Freedom of speech, you know, free, free, free. This is all made up by the ego to have you pursue an ideal that really isn't free. And some of you might remember even in the Matrix movie where Neo takes him into this simulator and, and there's some of these fight scenes and, and basically, you know, he says, how did I beat you? And Neo tries to give him all these things and, and Morpheus says, do you really believe that that's air that you're breathing? <laughs> Whoops, <coughs> I forgot that this was a simulator <laughs> there for a moment. You know, that's getting kind of deep into assumptions and beliefs. The belief that you actually breathe air is part of the ego system. It runs that deep. All the stuff about breath work and reaching God through the breath, you know, that's another thing that the spirit can use, but in the end you have to give up that idea too that the breath has something to do with life. One time I was listening to A Course in Miracles teacher. I was sitting there doing the dishes and I had these tapes playing. And one of the students asked the teacher, he said, what does A Course in Miracles have to say about life on other planets? And the teacher said, well, the Course says that there's no life on this planet. <laughs> and I just got the biggest smile on my face. I went, oh my God, I've never <laughs> heard such a thing. There's no life on this planet. Well, that kind of puts things into a different context. Uh, right. There's, and, and actually, if you go a little further, there's no planet even there uh, to have life. It, you, know, it, you know, I hear Course in Miracles jokes, you know, about, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, doesn't make a sound. You know, <laughs> there's no forest and there's no tree and there is no person and there is no sound. You know, it, it takes it all to a, a whole new level of awakening where you start to realize that when the Buddhists say empty your mind and go into the void, the void is no thing. You know, it's a beautiful pathway to God, even though they don't believe in a deity or a God, but still it's a beautiful pathway inward. Uh, that's what you start to realize. And so part of what we're going to do today is, is just open our minds up to that idea that everything we think we know and everything we think we believe about the world, including all the things we believe about spirituality, is all part of an egoic system. That in the end, we do have to give up all of our beliefs. And, and it, I would say that's really what true forgiveness is. Uh, we were talking about trying to define it uh, the other day. I was talking about non-judgment. It's very much like the void that the Buddhists talk about, you know, letting go of thinking you know anything. Wiping the mandala, you know, seeing that none of the images have any meaning, any lasting meaning. That's a beautiful way of just wiping the mandala. And we have so many clips, um, uh, there are clips, uh, some of you might have heard of the movie Simone, or you want to question? Can you say it again, forgiveness? We just defined it. Yes. It's just emptying the mind of everything that you think you know. Letting go of all beliefs. Letting go of all beliefs. And so that's why I say forgiveness in that way is, is the only helpful belief because you're letting go of all specific beliefs. And you're coming to what we could call a universal belief that's all inclusive. It, it doesn't reject anything. It doesn't say, uh, this is good and this is bad. It literally, bad is swallowed up in this all-inclusive belief. So it has no walls, it has no barriers. Um, one belief that I guess I hold and that I've 
what he wrote about is that the God or the Spirit is an undifferentiated reality. No beginning, no end, no black, no white, no cold, no hot. And so it had a dream or a thought or a mad moment or something where it needed to experience itself. And so it created this reality with a differentiation so that it could experience something because undifferentiated mean it couldn't. So if that's what God is, which is far reach, but if it is, why would we want to go back to an undifferentiated reality where there is no experience of self? Yeah, I never, I, I did read that philosophy too because I read it in many different philosophies and that, that was so funny. If, if God is all in all and God is pure love and happiness and peace and joy, the idea that that peace and joy and love and happiness is not an experience is crazy. Uh, it's, uh, that's just, a, a, the ego invented this idea that, that somehow that which is all, that which is everything, uh, needed to experience itself. Of course it experiences itself. Uh, love, love looks upon itself, love knows itself, joy knows itself, peace knows itself. It's a, it's a whole experience. And so, I know there are different philosophies, I've read many of them, including even more contemporary ones like uh, Conversations with God, for example, and this and that, where there's this idea of needing uh, a differentiated self, needing duality, needing multiplicity to experience itself. It that makes absolutely no sense at all. Uh, what is whole and perfect, what would it have need of anything? If it, it's whole and complete, uh, why would it need something to to what, get further completion when it already is totally complete. So, yeah, the, that philosophy never made any sense. Um, as I said during these meetings all week, um, the ego is just a belief in separation. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't follow from anything. I mean, it doesn't have a parent. People have asked, what is the source of the ego? Frankly, the ego doesn't have a source. Uh, it, it doesn't have a reality, it doesn't have an existence, but what we're talking about, the reason we even use the term ego, the reason we talk about defense mechanisms and, and a two-tiered mask, you know, a, a lower tier, a dream that you dream in secret and a, a dream that you gave away, the reason we go into all this is because is when the mind seems to believe in the ego, it, it loses awareness of of God, of love, of oneness, and in truth that really can't be lost. I mean, it's almost like we're just using symbols and metaphors, or like Joe was saying, I think I gave in one of my talks with Penelope, it's like a ladder to climb, and when you reach the top of the ladder, the ladder disappears, uh, because it's just, it's just a symbol of, of a journey and awakening. It's a symbol, a ladder, climbing a ladder is like a symbol of, of climbing the rungs of consciousness to reach a high state of consciousness where you're fully conscious. And yet, it's like, it's what Jesus calls a journey without distance hmm, to a goal that has never changed. A journey without distance. Goodness, what can that possibly be? What is he speaking? Is he back into uh, speaking in, in metaphors here? Is, is he talking about, uh, is there a journey at all? And what's happening here, you know, is it like an anomaly, is it something, you know, we have different words for it, but basically what we're saying is if you don't experience happiness and joy and love and peace on a constant basis, if you're not constantly in that state of mind, the only thing we could conclude from that is that you don't know it, you don't know what it is, and in that case, we aim the questions not so much at how did the impossible happen, because we've been told it didn't. And, and the ego mind goes, oh right, right, it didn't happen, huh? <laughs> like Truman, <laughs> banging, on, banging on the wall, right? It didn't happen. But we've been told, no, it, separation is impossible, but you believe that it has happened. And you need help. There is nothing in that system of belief, of separation, that can get you out of it. 
Uh, you need a divine intervention. But you also have this ability of choice that must be used in this awakening. In other words, if, if you truly were completely helpless, then that would prove that the separation was real. You, know, you must have a mechanism within you to wake yourself up. Uh, you must have it there, otherwise you would be helpless. Otherwise you would be the ultimate victim. Whoops, I, I fell into a big mind trap and I forgot who I was and now I'm completely helpless. Uh, and if, if it was just the world of the five senses and the body and there, and there was no escape hatch, then victimization would be real, God would not be real, uh, and, and uh, separation would be permanent. But what we're being told is, oh, there is an escape hatch. Uh, in fact, if you get to make it up to Lesson 23 of A Course in Miracles, he lays it out in print. I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's what point Lesson 23 is. He's, he's going directly for the escape hatch, <clears throat> saying that these thoughts are not your real thoughts, and that you can release them. You can give them over to the Holy Spirit, to the light, and, and be free of these attack thoughts. So we don't want to get caught up in how did the separation happen, or even into the theology. I mean, I read those theologies too, that, that, that what was undifferentiated and whole couldn't experience itself, so it needed the duality and multiplicity to experience itself. You know, it was like, how could that which is whole and complete need something uh, to experience itself if it was already whole and complete. That just doesn't, that never made any rational, divine rationality sense to me. You know, it was just another kind of way of explaining the impossible, which uh, we're trying to escape from the impossible, not to explain it. So you're saying the attack thoughts are the hows, the hows and the whys. Yeah, the attack thoughts are... The evaluations. Yeah, the evaluations, the judgments, that is like what the ego is. The ego is an attack the, the thought. The figuring out, the trying to figure yes. it out. The analyzing, the figuring out, yeah, all those things are part of it. And of course that's what we were raised with. You know, fix it. You got a problem, fix it. It's a huge leap of faith to give up all of that. Oh, it is, but, it, but believe yeah. me, it's it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like that big rusty bolt but you were I can talking see where about. Gary's, Gary's well read, he's been in this process for as long as he's, you know, been on this path of awakening, and an intellectual person as well as spiritual person. Yeah, that battle is going on. You know, it's like, how do I give up that? How, how to figure it out? How, you know, that, that. But I see, I can see it from this place of um, understanding, uh, of course, miracles in the sense of ego. That's the ego not wanting to release them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I need a divine inter intervention here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. That's wonderful. And only, only the willingness right there. That's, that's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. That's what we're... we're it's not, we, everyone needs a divine intervention. It's, all, it's not just some people. It's not just oh, scary. The no. touchy-feely ones, they get a free pass. The, the intellectual ones, no, they have to get a you know, divine intervention. No, it's like no, everyone. Everybody. I mean, you know, I, I would go through the other end of, in, of the so-called intellectual scheme of defenses was, was what I call the touchy-feely way to God, where I would, I would go to different workshops and seminars, and they would come up to me and they would go, David? And I'd say, yes. And they'd say, feel the love. Feel the love. And they would say it with Just feel your way back into oneness. And I'd say, I'd say something. They'd say, don't think. Don't think. Feel the love. You've got to feel the love. And it's like, oh, I've been trying. So I tried all the experiential stuff to feel the love, feel the love. I said, it's not working. <laughs> I mean, what, what's, what's blocking the way? Don't ask those questions. <laughs> Just feel the love. It's like, oh God, where am I going? So, you know, what we have to do is we have to go, we do need a divine intervention here because, you know, you have to, you really have to, release or or forgive before you can feel the love. 
In fact, one time I went down to Argentina and uh, they took me to this like cafe and there was a little stage there and there was a female bishop who was taking me around uh, South America and Argentina and introducing me and A Course in Miracles to the people of Argentina. So I'm down there and, and I talked to her and I said, she said, well, I'm like a female bishop. I said, how does that work? What church uh, are you part of? And she said, well, definitely not the Catholic Church. She said, I'm blacklisted <laughs> by the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is out to get me. I said, okay, so you're working with the Course? And she said, yeah, I'm introducing it to people. Here's how it works. I go up on the stage, I'll take you around Argentina, and I will give like a 10 minute talk on the Course in Miracles. And then I will introduce you and you can get up and talk for like an hour and a half or two hours. I said, okay. So we go to this cafe and she gets up there and she's giving, it's all in Spanish, which I don't speak. So I was listening to the 10 minute introduction talk and she didn't even get to, to her 10 minute talk. After like five minutes, it was an angry mob. I mean, I, I don't know Spanish, but I know red faces, and I can, I can pick up the emotional vibe. This, this was a hostile crowd. It was like a comedian who was bombing, and had a whole room full of hecklers. And she was getting, seemed to be kind of getting very nervous and anxious, and she's the lead opening act, and I'm the follow-up, the follow and they're like, you can see the red veins in their throat and the Spanish, it's all coming very fast. When they get angry they speak very fast. And it was coming very fast and finally she just threw her arms up and she said the equivalent of, uh, I cannot answer your questions but there is one here uh, who will answer all of your questions. And she got off the stage and I had just my little cup of chai tea. Uh, I didn't even get to eat a couple sips. So oh, I'm on. <laughs> So it's like an angry mob, and so I get up there, and what she was trying to do is she started laying on them some of the things like they're, you're never a victim, um, everything that you perceive in the world happens to you because you ask for it, and there is no evil. I don't know what she was telling them. You said because you wish to be sick. I, so she, she was given them a 10 minute version, but she only got through five minutes and the crowd was hostile. And apparently the situation was that, that um, it was a small town, it was Miramar, down south of Buenos Aires, and most of the people at the cafe were teachers in the local school, and a girl had just been raped and murdered, and so the teachers were already on edge uh, when they came into the cafe because of this event. And I don't know what she said or how she said it, but she was probably giving them some divine metaphysics, you know, and they, the, the rage, it brought their rage uh, to the surface in a hurry. So when I got up there, I started talking, and uh, a couple of them had, had heard of A Course in Miracles and had actually opened the book and read the introduction. So one of the teachers said in Spanish, and it was translated to me, I have heard about this Course in Miracles, and it says that that this is a required course. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> you know, that was the first uh, question. Because it, it does say that it is a required course. It doesn't mean that you have to take the book, but it's talking about, I, I said, no, what it means by that is it means that forgiveness is required. That our divine nature is pure love and oneness. And that the only gateway that we come back to that love and oneness is learning to to release the illusions that we have in our mind, to forgive or release the illusions. And it doesn't mean that you have to read this book. <laughs> I said to them immediately, because they were quite hostile uh, towards the Course and to her from what they had just experienced. I said it's just the curriculum is required, but it comes in many, many forms. Uh, you, can, you can get it in many different ways in this world. And they were like, hmm, <laughs> claro, claro, kind of like, <laughs> That's clear, but, but you're not off the hook yet. So, actually what they did was, they, they did work their way very quickly into some pretty extreme examples. I mean, after like 15 or 20 minutes of answering some questions, we got into Hitler and Nazi Germany. I mean, they, it was good. They were stirred up about these thoughts, and, and we were actually able to get into this thing about, about victimization, about 
what was underneath this world, the making of this world, what purpose was it made for, it was made as a distracted device, as a, like a dumping ground, as a projection, you know, to seem to try to get rid of the hurt and the pain and the guilt and see it acted out as if it was outside of you, when it actually was part of a crazy belief system that was being held on to, you know, went through the whole thing very gently, very carefully. We probably spent at least 25 minutes on Hitler and Nazi Germany going through what, what about, but, 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 and the Spirit would gently answer every but, very softly. And as usual with those gatherings, it just, the angry mob turned, and at the end they invited me out for pizza and ice cream. Uh, it, was, it was just beautiful again to, to know that everybody wants this experience of love. And everybody has this rage inside that has to come up.